Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here today. We are doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. This one is of this mountain landscape that you can see here. It's done on an 11 by 14 canvas. You could use similar sizes as well. And all the paints I'm using are Liquitex Basics. I'll list below the colors that I'm using. If you haven't checked out my other step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials, I'll have that playlist linked below for you as well. Let's jump right into it. Okay, here I have it already laid out a little bit. I did a little sketch of what's going to be happening here. And if you followed along with a tutorial with me before, with landscape paintings, I often try to follow rule of thirds to an extent, right? So down here, I've got the hill starting here about a third of the way down, starting up here about a third of the way up. Same with over here, slightly off because I didn't want them straight across from each other. So a little bit over here, we got one mountain peak at a third there. This one's pretty much right in the middle, which uh, sometimes can be avoided, but I think it'll be fine for what we're doing right here. With landscape paintings, I like to start at the back and work my way to the front. It just makes those layers uh, a little bit more uh, crisp and clean instead of trying to paint around things as you're going. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, I didn't mention in the intro, but all the paints I'm going to use today are Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. I find them to be... A good quality <coughs> excuse me and a fairly decent price as well brushes here these are Fumui brushes they're just from Amazon uh, I've used them for a few months now and I use them for a pretty large painting I did and I've been using them for tutorials I've got a review of these as well if you want to check them out they're actually they're actually not too bad they came come with a case and everything so they're they're kind of my go-to a whole 25 set of different things so we're gonna start with our sky here now this is a beautiful sunset scene and so we're going to have some nice pinks and yellows orange and then as it gets to the darker side things are going to be turning a little bit of that dark blue already like the night sky does and so i want my sun to be more over here and so i'm going to start there with the lights and kind of work my way around now don't feel like you have to paint around um, your mountain sketch if you're doing a mountain sketch I'm going to paint over a little bit. That's fine. This is just to give me idea, an idea of where things are going to go. I want to overlap these areas a little bit. So, uh, to start, I'm going to take some titanium white. Put a little bit of that down on my palette there. I'm also going to take some... I'm using Naples Yellow Hue and Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. You could really just get away with one of these. I'm just skipping a step. I'm not going to have to mix as much white to get this more pale yellow. So I'm going to put a little bit of that down. At this point, I'm also going to put a little bit of pink down. Just some nice rose pink. And then I will put this deeper yellow down there as well. If you want to use some orange in there, you totally could use some orange in there. I'm just going to use these for now and see where we get. The nice thing about this is you can always make adjustments as you need. So I'm using a larger brush because we're going to be filling in a big area. Just a nice big flat one. I'm going to take some white here. And because I want the lighter parts to be down right close to the horizon line as if the sun just barely went down, that's where I want this white to mainly be right in there. Once I've got that in there, I'm going to take a little bit of this Naples yellow. You could take a little bit of that cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to blend it in. And I kind of want, I don't know, the movement of the sky to be a bit diagonal here. I'm not going straight across. And so that's why you can see my brush strokes are slightly up. If you feel like it's too yellow in some spots, Grab a bit more white on that brush and blend it in. I'm going to get a bit more of that here. As I move upwards, away from the horizon line, then I'm going to make that obviously become a bit darker of a yellow. And when you're blending in skies, just simple skies like this without clouds. You can start in the dark and then just work your way back down into the light and it'll create a nice blending sensation there. So I'm gonna take a bit more of this, put it in there. Now I'm gonna take a bit of this 
cadmium yellow deep and work that up into the corner here and work that back down into my Naples yellow. I should remember that. Been to Naples a few times. Naples, Italy, not Naples. Isn't there a Naples like in Florida or something like that? All right, can I take a little bit more of each of these? Just do some blending. If you feel like it's too dark, grab a little bit of white. You can always blend things out. Now, as I move further away from where that sun actually is, that's where I'm going to start adding in some of this pink in here. Maybe you need a little bit of white onto that pink as well. Maybe some pink up in this top area here. There we go. I'm just creating some streaks here in the sky of different colors. Um, no, it's okay with what we're doing here, I think. You'll see with these lighter colors that we're using, <coughs> the pencil that we've done underneath will often continue to show through. And that's great, because that'll just be that guide for later on. I feel like we need just a little bit of pink over in this direction. There we go, just to lighten that up a little bit in there. Okay. These canvases are a bit smoother than the last ones I was using. The last ones I was using were pretty, they were pretty rough. Okay, now we're gonna use some Payne's Gray. If you've never used Payne's Gray before, I mean, you don't have to use it. You can actually just use some blue, dampen it down with some black, maybe some brown. Uh, we're just just make it not so powerful but Payne's gray is also an awesome color it's pretty powerful and it's pretty dark by itself so i'm just going to put a little bit down there and i'm just going to take a little bit here and just show you kind of what i mean here so even though it says Payne's gray it is gray but it has a dark blue tinge to it i mean mixed in with a lot of this pink and yellow that we got going on here it's really lightening it up there, which is totally fine. That's what I expected to happen. But let's take a bit more of that in here. Just mixing a little bit of this in, but you could just do like a little bit of a dark blue. And I'll show you here, let's take, um, <clears throat> You could take an ultramarine blue. What do I even have up here? Got some cobalt blue. We could do a little bit of that in here. But ultramarine is more of a, it's a more purple blue. Cobalt's kind of getting that way as well. Just not quite as harsh. I feel like it's just a little bit too blue. I'm going to add a bit more Payne's Gray to that, but you could add some black to it. I want a blue tinge, but I also want... There we go. just to get a little bit of dark coming in over there. <clears throat> okay, and that's all we're gonna do for the sky. We're gonna move on from that sky now. Let's move into our mountains. I'm gonna continue to use this same brush for a little bit here because we're gonna be blocking in the mountains 
Um, I may as well, I might do some blocking in of some other things while I have this brush out. If not, we'll just come back to it. You can do some things in different orders here. So for the mountains, we're going to do the same idea of starting from the back and working towards the front here. So I'm just going to do a nice dark background for these mountains. And for that, I want them to be dark purple. Now, again, you can always mix your, your purple. I use all these Liquitex basics for the paint by number kits that I make. And so I happen to have a lot of colors on hand. And so I just thought I may as well use them. So this is dioxazine purple, just a nice dark purple, as you can see there. Actually, I'll leave that out because we'll probably use it a little bit later on as well. We're going to use some brilliant purple later on. But I'm going to take that uh, dioxazine purple, that dark purple. I'm going to grab a palette knife here. Take some of that Payne's gray. It needs a little bit more of that. I said it was powerful, but it's not powerful enough for purple. Let's take some of this in here. There we go. Just a hint of white, just to tone that down a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of blue into there. That purple is powerful, my friends. <clears throat> to tone that down a bit more, I'm actually just going to add... Well, I could add some raw umber to it. I'm just going to add some Mars black. I'm just going to go with the black. Some artists will say, don't use black. Black's not a natural color. It's here to use. Let's use it. All right, let's add some of this in there. There we go. Some pink got mixed in there too, but that's totally fine. That pink's not powerful enough to do anything important against this dark. Okay, you could rinse off your brush if you wanted to, but honestly, with how dark of a color we're going with here, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So what I want you to do now, and what, well, what we're going to do now, is we're just going to lay in the base layer of our mountains. So I'm just going to go in here. I have it still drawn on here where I want. I'm just going to lift this up a little bit for me. Hopefully you can still see. Well, I know you can, but... Now, if you feel like you need a certain angle at your canvas to get lines how you want it, don't ever hesitate to just move it, right? Maybe you want to move it like this so you can get a better straight line going up here and down this way. You know, so anything like that. Your canvas doesn't always have to be on an easel or sitting the same way, right? It can change. Now, the most important thing here is that I am painting. Do I still see that line? I don't even see that line anymore. And I'm overlapping where the sky color is, right? We don't want to leave any white space between the mountain and the sky. That's why we painted the sky low, right? And I do have rough lines in here of where I want things to be. I'm going to turn this this way now. So now I can get these lines roughly in the right spot. And again, I'm just filling this in. So I wanted a line right there, kind of. for myself here. Now I'm starting to do my brush strokes already in the direction that I want the slopes to go in. We'll talk more about that as we get into that, but just so I have an idea already of where I want my brush strokes to be. That'll help you guide your mountain along.
and just this back a little bit here as well. So just by the brush strokes that I already have on there, I've already mapped out a little bit of how I want my mountain to go. So I'm going to have kind of some peaks along here, coming flowing down this way, a back peak right here, and kind of a more side one right here. So when you're focusing on nature and well especially mountains here at sunset we want to be aware of where that sun is we already know that sun's over here so that means this side of the mountain or anything facing this way is going to be lighter or have some lighter highlights than anything on the back sides like anything on this side over here right or this side over here and so that's going to be those are going to be the parts where we have some shadows I'm just going to make a bit more of a peak for this guy here. Okay. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Uh, let's do this, actually. For each of these paintings, I usually do a, a mini one first, kind of as my reference or partially and so I'm just kind of looking at my the previous one that I did to making some comparisons things always differ a little bit okay so this mountain we're not actually going to be really adding snow to it so we're not going to re be adding a lot of bright whites or anything to it we want to add some um, shadows of different rocks and yeah and some trees are on these mountains and so to do that I'm going to continue to use this brush for now because we're not going to be adding a ton of necessarily fine detail here. But I'm going to bring out again some more of this Naples yellow. And again, if you don't have Naples yellow, you can always just use a yellow that you have and tone it down with some white. If your yellow's too bright still, you could add a little bit of brown to it as well. And that will just help kind of tone that brightness down. We're going to use that. We're going to use some brilliant purple. This is just a light purple. So again, you can always mix your own red and green, or red and green, red and blue, and then you can add some whites to it uh, to tone that down, make that a little bit lighter. And then along the bottom, I'm just going to put it out right now, so I have it out. I'm going to use some deep green permanent. This is more of a blue green. If I compare it here with you to hooker's green hue permanent you can see the warmer green versus the cooler green this cooler green is what we want on our mountains because distance in landscapes creates cooler greens compared to lighter greens and so i want that one out here for sure okay now let's uh i'm gonna go in here with that dark purple that we were using I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to it here so you can see just kind of toning that up a little bit and i'm just going to create a few brush strokes down the shadowy side here and a few as well on this lighter side, even though we're gonna be covering up a lot of this with some other colors very shortly. Okay, I'm gonna take some of this brilliant purple. Get some of that going in here. Now some of it's gonna blend in and that's completely fine. We don't want it all to be in one spot anyways. Take a little bit of this Naples yellow. If you feel like this brush is too cumbersome, it's too big, you can always switch to a smaller one. I think I might switch to a smaller one myself, actually, just for sake of what we're doing here. 
So I'm going to rinse this one off. I always like to use mason jars for my water because then I can easily just slap a lid on it. And then I use just cut up clothes for rags to dry them. You know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Okay, so I'm going to set this one down. I'm just going to grab this angle brush. With this brand, it's a size 6. And I'm going to take some of that Naples yellow there and brush a little bit of that into the mountain side on the sunny side. Now some of it's going to blend in quite a bit with those purples and that's what we want it to do. Going to take some of this lighter purple in here. a few brighter streaks up in here take some of that rose as well Okay, now I'm going to take this Naples yellow as well on this mountain over here because this part of this mountain is also in that sunlight and same with this one over here. Now I'm going to take some more of this purple, add it into the shadowy side here. I just got to lift this up so I can get a better angle at what I'm doing here. Okay, at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this deep permanent green that I had and start at the base and just brush some of this up into the mountain. You can actually kind of hear it 
Hear me scrubbing some of that up and in here. Just going in here and adding some other random highlights to the darker side. If you feel like you went too light in some spots, you can always go back in and add some of those darker highlights back in. All right, I feel like I need a bit more of this light. Just to be blended into a few spots. All right. We're good there. We're going to move into another step towards the foreground. And for this, I'm going to continue to use this deep permanent green. But I'm also going to add to some of it a raw umber brown. You could use black if you'd like to as well. I'm just trying to be a little bit more proper and stay away from that. I'm just making it a little bit darker that's all I'm doing here even if you wanted to use a little bit of that purple that we had that would be fine as well and again these this hill is going to be further away than what's going on over here so that's why I'm still using that more of a blue green and I'm just blocking in here I'm not worried much about much about anything <laughs> I'll worry about brush strokes here in just a minute kind of the direction of those brush strokes and how things are moving If you wanted to go back and use that larger brush, you definitely could.
Okay. Sorry, I kind of had that turned sideways there for so long. That's blocked in now. Now, a lot of greens will be uh, a bit transparent to begin with, so I'm going to let that one dry, and I'm going to come back to that later. I'm going to do the same kind of thing over here now. I'm going to take a little bit of black on this. I'm just going to block this in here as well. You can see I used a bit of black instead, so that's just going to be a bit more powerful. This is just going to be the background of some more trees that we're going to do up in the front here. All right, now with this darker black and green that we kind of had going on here, I'm just going to start mixing that in a bit with this first layer. Got something else on my brush there. Okay, I'm going to let that actually dry now. <laughs> I know I said I was going to before. I'm just going to rinse this one off. Okay, so we're going to come back and add a few little details into that. But we're going to start moving our way forward a little bit. And the greens that we're going to be using are going to be a bit more green now than uh, than blue right we're gonna go more to that warmer side of greens because they're much closer to us and so I'm gonna use a little bit of brilliant yellow green excuse me even some light green permanent you could use and I'm gonna mix some of those with that cadmium yellow deep hue and that Naples yellow hue just to soften them up a little bit but they're gonna stay warm compared to the green deep permanent that we were using um, beforehand um, yeah so I'm just gonna do a quick block in of this bottom as well just so we have a base to go off of and to do that I'm gonna take some light green permanent I'm blocking in a decent area so I want a decent amount of paint there and I'm gonna mix that with I know I have a little bit left up there but I'm gonna mix that with our cadmium yellow deep hue now i could rinse this off but i'm not too worried about that it will darken things up a little bit but that's just going to help mute it going to add some naples yellow in there i feel like it's still too green so i'm just adding a bit more yellows to it could add some of this darker stuff to it just softening it down a bit so it's not quite so of a bright green. Okay, I'm gonna take that. Um, for this big of a space, I may as well bring out the big brush again.
so close, but yet so far. That's okay. Most of this front stuff that has going here will be covered up anyways by some other colors, and so I just wanted to get kind of a base down for it. Okay, there we go. Awesome. I'm going to rinse this brush off now. I think I will be done with that one for good for now. As far as I have planned, I will be done with that one for now. These are still a little bit wet, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a break, let things dry off a little bit, and then I'll come back and be able to add some more details into there for you. Okay, so I let this dry a little bit so I can go up through and do a second layer now on these greens. So on the hill here is what we're going to work on first. I'm going to get some of this deep, <laughs> grape, green deep permanent out here again. I'm also going to put out a little bit of black. And the reason I'm not going to use raw umber to darken it up right now is because that kind of made it almost too warm for what I want here and so I just gonna I'm gonna take a little bit of black with this that makes it pretty dark we can add a little bit more here okay now I'm just gonna take this angular brush that I was using before and with this I'm just gonna go in and just add basically brush strokes going in here left or right and that's gonna be enough of the detail that I want for what these trees are sorry I always pause a lot when I talk mid thought Go. Just trying to adjust the mic to a better spot for you. So I'm basically redoing a bottom layer. Because I felt like we really needed a deep green in here. Especially because the sun's already gone way behind this hill. And so we're not really having any sunlight hit this hill at all these trees that were that would be here are going to be pretty dark Don't mind that in the background, it's just my air conditioning. It's already hot. <laughs> it's summertime here. <coughs> okay, now that I have that nice and dark in there, I'm going to grab just some of this pure green deep permanent and just brush some of that in throughout various spots here. Some parts will get more blended than others and that's actually what I want.
on your video there it looks really dark <laughs> just because I think it's wet still it doesn't look as dark in person it's got some of these lighter highlights going through here <clears throat> and that's all I'm gonna do for that for now Just rinse that brush off. Now what I want to grab is a fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, you can just use um, any type of straight brush, not a round brush. Um, we're going to move into the trees that are a bit closer now here on this side. And to do that, they're going to be a bit warmer because they're closer. So I'm going to take some of this hooker's green hue. This is just a warmer, darker green. Put a little bit there, put a little bit there, and I'm going to put a little bit there. The reason being is I'm going to mix some of this with a little bit of raw umber. I'm going to mix another bit of it with cadmium deep yellow. And the other one I just want to be plain. So let's grab a clean palette knife here. Well, clean paint's dried on it, so I'm not too worried about it there. Just making a darker green there. Now I'm going to take some of this yellow. This yellow will lighten it up a bit and it will also just tone that green down so it's not so bright. And I'm just going to take a little bit of black here just to tone this one down, but keep it more of a mid-tone green. Okay, so we got three different little shades of green there. I'm going to take the darker one first. Just load up that fan brush there. Now in this area, I want this part here to be the furthest away. So they're going to have like the shortest trees. They're going to get bigger as they come this way to show that things are, there's some depth going on there. So for the smaller ones, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit. And I'm just going to be going in and dabbing this in here. If you get a little bit onto the green in front, no issues at all. Because we're going to go over a lot of that anyways. So fan brushes are good because they're nice and skinny. And they create some irregular um, proportions, which is what we want. If your trees are all perfectly lined up, things are going to look weird, right? Not in nature, they're not perfectly lined up. That's why I'm adding a few here that are maybe taller than others. Notice we have that deep background there, that really dark background. That's serving us here as well, right? And that's going to show through. And that's totally fine. I'm going to move on to our next shade of green and just go in and do that exact same thing. You want to make sure that you do put enough trees in that the deep line that we had going on where the dark background was is mostly covered up. It's okay if there's a bit that shows through in spots but we don't want there to be a super distinct line running right through those trees there so. And don't forget to go around the bases as well. Now I'm going to take the lighter going in here and for this painting this is going to be as light as I need to go for daylight ones this would be more of a mid-tone and I'd do another shade lighter but for this one this is all I really need to do. If you feel like it, you don't have a dark enough spot in there, I'm going to make a bit of this darker color in here again. And just dab some of this through, especially down in this skinny area. I feel like I added too much of this 
light green. Maybe I might try a little bit of this blue-green in here, that stuff that's maybe a little bit shaded. Yeah, it's not looking too bad in there. Just adding a little bit of that here and there. Keeping it from being too warm overall. Adding some nice blue-greens to it. Now if you really wanted to, you could take this and do some, um, turn this sideways, like I kind of did there, like this, and add this throughout here. By doing sideways instead of vertical, that's going to make this look a lot more um, faded, faded farther away, sorry. it's been been a long day and I'm just gonna go in throughout here dabbing this in Now again, to you that looks super, super dark, but there is a bit of texture in there. I do, I do promise that. But if I wanted to add a little bit more, I could add some of this green with this just to lighten that up and just add a few lighter spots. Throughout various locations. Now again, to you, this probably still looks very, very dark, but it is lighter in person. Okay, fan brush, uh, I'm gonna give it a rinse because it's got some pretty dark colors on it there. Now we're going to move into our foreground. So for the foreground, we're going to be doing uh, a little bit more on the grass, and then we're going to move into the flowers that we're going to be working on as well. So for the grass, I want the grass to be a bit more yellow. So I'm going to use some brilliant yellow green here. I'm going to add a bit more cadmium yellow deep out onto the palette. And we're going to just clean off this one. So to this, a little bit of this, I do want to use that that we were using before. And then I just want to tone down that brilliant yellow green. It was a little bit too, too strong. <laughs> For my liking okay now for this you can really use any type of brush you could use a big flat you could use the angular brush that we were using before um, I think I'll opt for the angular brush so that green that we had laid down before was pretty transparent it wasn't very smooth and so I'm just looking to smooth some of this out here And we're going to add in some of that bright yellow green in spots. And I'm going to go in similar to kind of what I did with the sky 
and just blend some of that together as we as we are moving and it doesn't need to be perfect definitely doesn't need to be perfect Okay, I'm not too worried about this direct front because we're going to be adding a lot in front of it as well. And so if it's not perfect, that's totally fine. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm just going to set this one aside, but I should probably rinse it off just in case so it doesn't dry out on me. And I am going to grab a smaller round brush. Just looking at what I have here for brushes. Uh, looks like I've misplaced one of them that I was looking at using. Yeah, this is a bit bigger than I was thinking, but the end of it's nice and small, so that'll, that's okay. It'll work with what I'm wanting to do. So we're going to start adding a few flowers, and those flowers are going to be more the background ones. We're going to work our way to the foreground ones. And so we want along this tree line to have the smallest flowers. They're just going to be little dots. Now the flower colors that we're going for are going to be a bit um, bright, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, yeah. I'm going to be using more of like a deep violet and a quinacridone magenta here you can kind of see what they look like this just to be the darker part of the petals this to be the lighter part of the petals so i'm just using a warmer dark purple and then this is technically a lighter purple has obviously it looks more pink though but again it's still on the warm side of things so i'm going to put a little bit down here of each of these And I'm going to take, just on the end of the brush, and I'm just going to be making very small dots. Now they don't need to be in any type of formation. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. It's just going to be more as if there's like different pockets of um, flowers around. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And then as we get a little bit closer, I'm going to try to increase those sizes a little bit. And then you can even start adding. Well, you really don't need to add detail to them. But the important part is that far away, they're the tiniest dots. The closer you get, the larger they can be. And that's just creating that distance sensation for us. I'm just going in with the deep violet right now. I'll go in with the uh, magenta in just a minute here. Quinacridone, that's a good word for you. Word of the day, quinacridone. And you're going to see as you're adding these in and getting bigger ones closer here, 
that the distance itself is really going to start to take shape on its own and you don't really have to worry about it. Quite a bit of this is going to be covered up anyways in the end, and so that's why I'm not putting in a lot of detail into this. It's just enough to get the sense of what's going on. I'm going to take some of this lighter now. Now some of them I am going to overlap and others I will create new spots. Because technically it's the same flower, just the two different shades. But some of them will probably just see the purple, some of them will see both and so. Just creating a nice flowery field. Okay, I'm going to leave it for now. Ooh. The arm of my chair almost popped off. <laughs> We're going to come back to that. Um, I'm just going to wipe this one off. We're going to move into the very foreground now. <clears throat> and then if we need to add anything else around, we can. So for the very foreground, it's going to be where the flowers are right up front, nice and close. And so for that, we can still use some of this dark green here if you have it. If not, just mix up a little bit of that dark green again. And we're just going to make here coming out the leaves where, and the parts of the stems where these flowers are coming in. And they're going to go right up into what we were just making. That's why I wasn't too worried about covering the foreground here. I'm still using that round brush, but you could do this with other types of brushes as well.
Okay, I'm just going to go in now with some of this hooker's green here. Mix a bit of this uh, Naples yellow hue with it. Just that really pale yellow. These are kind of just going to be the, the highlights onto these stems here. Okay, once you have the grass where you want it now, we can go in and start adding um, the flowers. And so you can really make the flowers look any way that you would like. I'm just going to load up this brush. We'll do an example here, actually right in the middle here. Now for the flowers that I'm going to do, again, you can decide. I'm going to make them a bit more almost lily-like. So they kind of come up to a point here. Make this one a little bit wider though. And then they are filled with that same kind of idea. If you want to add another one up top there, you can. So we could almost go like one, two, three, or and do the same here with this lighter I'm going to go through and just do a few bases of flowers 
and then I'll come back with the lighter to go over top here. Don't forget to add a few down low as well. And if you want to <clears throat> have some really light highlights, you could add a little bit of light pink as well. And this doesn't have to be like all over the flowers. It could just be in a few spots. Just to add a little bit of a lighter highlight in there. Alright, I feel like what this is missing is a bit of yellow in this grass. I'm going to take some of this cadmium deep yellow. I'm going to rinse this brush off because I really don't want pink going in on this all. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that and just brush that into some of these um, stalks of grass. I just felt a little bit too pale here, if that makes sense. If 
you want to mix it in a bit more so it's not pure, pure yellow, feel free to do that. And then I'm just going to go in in a couple of these spots where I have flowers just to make sure I have um, the plant stalks going right to them or coming right out of them. So I'm going to take just one of these small round brushes and take this dark green that we were working with here and I'm just going to sign my name and the bottom here. And so if signing you can decide how you want to do it. I usually just do it with a color that I was using in the painting and just a darker version of it so it's still kind of matches what's going on here and then I usually just do my last name and then a smaller number for the year and that's all I do for it <clears throat> all right so that is our painting here I hope that you enjoyed it that you learned something that you can take back to your own projects and do better than I did here. Uh, if you haven't checked out my other step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials, I strongly encourage you to do that. That is linked below and it's, it'll be showing up on the screen right away here if it hasn't already. Thank you for watching this one. We'll see you next time here on Brian Sloan Artist.